Hi everyone, this is Abhinav from Phone Bunch, and today we are reviewing the Samsung Galaxy J1. Now it comes with a 1.2 GHz dual core processor, 512 MB RAM, and 4 GB ROM. So if you were thinking this is a throwback from 2010, it was actually launched just a month ago. But specs aren't the only thing that matter. You do have a 2 megapixel front facing camera here, 5 megapixel autofocus rear camera. So it's not all bad. We'll talk about this phone in great detail in our review. So moving to the left of the device, you can see the volume rocker, which is very sturdy. You can see the rounded corners, rounded sides, as well as the silver trim, which runs throughout the front panel. You have the audio jack at the top, and you can also see this new design language. Now it's all made of plastic, no metal here. Moving to the right, you have the power lock and unlock button. At the bottom, you have the primary microphone, micro USB data syncing and charging port. At the back, you have the five megapixel camera right there. It's autofocus and it has a slight bulge to it. Now you have a very bright LED flash, Samsung branding in there as well. Now the back doesn't have a matte finish. It does attract fingerprints very easily, but it's relatively very easy to clean. Now the front glass is also very fingerprint prone. I don't know whether you can see that or not. Now let me just open up the back cover. You'll be able to see the SIM card arrangement. Now in itself, the back cover is very flimsy and flexible, but not when on the phone. So you can expand storage by up to 128 gigs. You have two micro SIM card slots, one below the micro SD card slot and one to the left. And you have an 1850 mAh removable battery here. Overall solid construction. I haven't noticed any creak or flex anywhere on the device. But yes, the plastic does feel a little cheap to me. Now coming to the front, you'll be able to see you have a two megapixel camera right up top, a proximity sensor there, but there is no light sensor over here. So brightness is not automatic. There is no control over that. You would have to set it manually. You have a 4.3 inch WVGA display here, capacitive buttons which don't light up and a physical home button. Great viewing angles, good color reproduction. There is slight brightness shifting here, but the colors remain spot on. There is no color shifting on the device and there's no light bleeding over here as well. The color reproduction is pretty natural. It's not under nor oversaturated. And you can see the colors do look pretty good and the viewing angles are very wide. There is no distortion here. Moreover, the touch response is very good on the device. And you have an outdoor mode to increase brightness, which definitely increases sunlight legibility. Now, this is your default dialer. Coming to network and call quality, actually, it's pretty good on the device. You have 3G video calling support as well. Moreover, the earpiece is loud as is the speakerphone and clear too. I can see right here. This is your default calling interface. Now call recording is not available, but you can add an extra bit of volume to both the earpiece as well as the speakerphone. I can add memo during calls. And moreover, there are several settings where you can add a pop-up to your call, which you see right up top. And you can go ahead and change or play around with the settings a bit. Now, this is a 3G dual SIM smartphone. You have Wi-Fi, Bluetooth available, along with USB, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi tethering. Now, GPS is also available on the device. It generally works well when you are outside, but navigation works a bit slower on this device due to the lack of a magnetic field sensor. Now, this is the camera interface. You have a 5 megapixel rear camera with autofocus, LED flash. You have several modes including night, sports. Now, you can switch to the front facing camera, turn on or off flash here. You can see 5 megapixel still images can be taken in 4 to 3 aspect ratio. There are several filters you can directly apply onto the viewfinder as well. So you can see the final result before actually taking the image. Now you do have a self timer available too. Moreover, you can control focusing modes, metering modes, ISO, and you can capture 720p videos with the rear camera. You have a two megapixel front facing camera here, which can record in VGA resolution. The front facing camera is very clear too. Let me just take a photo. I'll show you that actually auto focusing is very quick here and the color reproduction from the final images are also good. Now here we are taking this in indoor lighting, so there is a bit of noise. So low light imaging is definitely not that good on this device. And you shouldn't expect that as well. Now this device costs just about 7200 rupees or so. The flash does work in low light. Now you can see how beautiful these images look. Now even though this is a 5 megapixel camera, it is able to capture great macro shots. Close up shots are really nice. And you can see there is a lot of detail with very, very less noise. Overall colors do look excellent. They are natural, they are neither oversaturated nor under. Here you can see a lot of detail is captured 
Now distant shots actually don't turn out that well. There's just not a lot of detail. This is obviously a 5 megapixel camera. But yes, even then, the color reproduction does remain very nice. Exposure compensation is also good. Now indoor images do turn out a little blurry and they do have a bit of noise in them. But color reproduction remains good. The flash definitely helps in low lighting conditions. Now you can record in 720p. Right now I'm using the macro focus. And you can see that the videos actually turn out pretty good. They are sharp. Now this is with normal autofocus mode on. You can tap to focus but continuous autofocus is not available in videos. Now have a listen to the audio. Hi everyone this is Abhinav from Phone Bunch and today we are recording a video sample. It's at 720p. The audio here is pretty clear as well. So folks this is the headset you get with the box. It's the same that you get with budget Samsung smartphones. They might not look the part but they definitely sound very good. Now the speakerphone here is actually very loud and clear which is quite surprising because even the Galaxy Grand Max which costs about twice this phone doesn't have a good speakerphone. And you do have an equalizer built in. You can choose a profile already set or you can even create your own profile. Now FM radio is also supported. You can just go ahead and record FM in stereo quality. RDS is also supported. Now it is able to find channels very quickly. And I haven't noticed any issues with at least FM playback. Now we are playing a 1080p video here. Even 1080p videos actually play flawlessly. But sometimes if you have many apps open in the background, they just stop playing and crash. Now we are playing our Xiaomi Redmi 2 gaming review. Now we are playing this over YouTube in 480p. That's the maximum supported by this display. Now YouTube playback is actually very smooth. Now here's the default launcher long pressing the menu button or any home screens. You can go ahead and change wallpapers, add widgets and here's your app drawer. Not many apps actually came pre-installed, basic Google apps, some Samsung apps. Now you can go ahead and uninstall apps directly. You can hide apps as well. So it's your standard TouchWiz launcher here. Nothing special. You have your notification toggles right up top. You cannot expand them here and you don't have automatic brightness which I've already told you. You can control brightness from up top. You have an ultra power saving mode but we'll talk about that in a while. Now this phone is running Android 4.4.4 KitKat right out of the box. Now you have the Spectrum 1.2 GHz dual core processor powering this smartphone with just 512 MB RAM and 4 GB ROM. So out of that 4 GB ROM you have about 2 GB available to install apps and games. Now app data is not movable but you can move apps to the external storage. So gameplay would be limited on this device. You can have a look at our gaming review as well. USB OTG is not supported. And you can see right here that you have just 78 MB RAM free right now and we are not running that many tasks in the background. So even though RAM management is good here as is garbage collection, there is just not enough RAM to multitask on this device. Now coming to display settings, you can go ahead and sort the order of your notification toggles. You can just go ahead and drag and drop them. Lock screen security, you get pattern, pin and password. No voice unlock or face unlock. And you can go ahead and change the lock screen effect. So there's a bit of customization. You can change lock screen and home screen wallpaper separately. Here's your task manager. You can simply kill all tasks as well. This is the default Samsung keyboard. You do have gesture support built in. Now coming to web browsing on this device, it's actually a bit laggy. You can see that text reflows a bit slowly, but pinch to zoom is very smooth. Now coming to general performance, you do notice a little bit of lag while coming through different apps. So multitasking is a bit slow here. Again, lack of RAM. And as soon as you open even the last task that you ran, the most recent task, you can see it's reloaded. So there's just not enough RAM to multitask on this device. Moreover, apps do crash, games crash right in between when you are playing. Now gaming isn't much fun either. They lag. They crash and there's just not enough space to install more than just a few games. Now with just a dual core processor and a 4.3 inch display, you would expect that battery life is good on the device and it's actually pretty good. You are able to get through one day of usage. You can also see that I was able to get about 4 hours of screen on time with some battery left. 
and you have the ultra power saving mode using which you can extend the battery life of the device especially if you are in an area where data connectivity is intermittent now here's the competition the xiaomi redmi 2 moto e and you have the samsung galaxy j1 thrown in there but that's just due to the price in reality there is no comparing the moto e and the new samsung galaxy j1 but yes the samsung galaxy j1 has far better cameras than the moto e so the moto e at present is only being killed by its camera the redmi 2 is better in every possible way better connectivity with 4g lte far better snapdragon 410 quad core processor 64 bit support better build and better cameras as well so really the samsung galaxy j1 has no place between these smartphones so the question stands why would you shell out about 7000 bucks for the samsung galaxy j1 which doesn't perform that great apps crash multitasking sometimes can be a pain but it has good cameras so does that justify the price samsung is asking for this phone well the answer would be no because there is a bare minimum specifications that you need for a phone to perform well and 512 mb ram with a dual core processor running touchwiz is not great at all so for now you should definitely give the samsung galaxy j1 a miss the moto e as well as the xiaomi redmi 2 seem better options within this price point we'll be back with more don't forget to subscribe like and share any questions hit us in the comment section thanks for watching and as always have a great day